So as you can see here on my drill press, the return spring is obviously not working. It's actually broken. The return spring is actually contained within this um, little piece here. So what we'll do now is we'll just um, undo that and take that off. And that bit just there just comes off, little cover, and inside that cover is um, the return spring. Or another name for it is a quill spring. Um, they're easily, replacements are easily found. You go online, if you, if you search quill spring or um, drill press spring, you'll get um, heaps of returns. And uh, all you need to know is basically the diameter size of this cover and the width of the spring. This is my spring that I managed to get, like I said, online. Uh, it did take a little while to get here. I don't know if that's because we're down here in Australia or not, but it was literally on a slow boat to, from China. But eventually got here. If you see the difference between that one and that one, it, it was this little, it was this little tag here that snapped off, and that little tag there goes into the slot of that spindle, and that's what. Um, helps to generate that uh, spring tension. So what we need to do now is just uh, take this one out and put this one back in there. So we'll do that. Alright, so I'll just, uh, just pull the old one out. should just pull straight out. I hope. That's it. That little upturned or that little return there on the spring just locks into that little locator there on the cover so we just got to get the new one in so you can't really put it in the wrong way you can only go in one way and it's that way I don't know how much tension that spring is under at the moment so instead of just ripping that um, bit of wire off that's retaining it what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide it towards the edge very carefully slide that towards the edge so that I can slip this into into the cover We'll see how this works. I haven't done this before this way, so okay, that's slipped in there. That's nice. What I'll, and then what I'm going to do is just basically to stop it from flying out, hit me in the face, or shooting across the garage. I'm going to put that clamp on there, and then just grab my long nose pliers and pull that retainer off. That's it. Just like that. Great. So we've released that tension. Oh, that's good. Make sure I don't pull that spring out of the end there. Trying to release this. There we go. Okay, that wasn't too hard. So that new spring there is now sitting inside that cover. And as again, as you can see, it's got that tab there, and that's just going to slide straight over the spindle into the slot of the spindle. And we can then we can generate some re some tension. So we'll get that back on the drill. Okay, so I'll slide the, um, the spring and the retainer over the spindle, lining up with that little return there in the spring. It just simply goes on like that. Oh, before I do that, you'll notice on the body of the drill itself, it's got that notch there. Now that notch is um, there to line up with the notches on the cover here. And the cover's got a number of those notches. That way you can uh, turn this cover and generate that, re that spring tension and then lock it in on those notches. So we'll get that on first, and I'll put a nut on, and I'll just put that on, just basically to keep it in place so it doesn't come off, but loose enough to let to allow me to um, to turn that. And at first, what I want to do is I just want to turn this enough. Now, see that's generating enough ten the tension, sorry, to bring the chuck back up on its own. So you just got to hold on to that because it's better loose than that. Okay, so there is enough tension to hold the chuck up. Just want to give that a test. Okay, so it's not actually returning on its own though. So we need a little bit more tension. So what we need to do is now turn this a few more turns and wind that spring up. I'll give it one more turn and we'll see what happens. 
well, probably too much. So you can adjust that, that's too much. So I'm going to bring that back one notch to there. You just keep adjusting it until you're happy with it yourself. Okay, there, there's not enough. So I need that one more turn, and that's the best I'm going to get for that one. So then all you do is, and that, now you don't lock this nut down as hard as you can. You need to leave it loose because that also will, will tighten up that whole spindle going through there, and it'll bind your chuck on its way up. So just, just there a little bit like that. Put the spanner on. Put on the lock nut. We'll lock up that lock nut. Line these two up so I can get that back spanner off. Otherwise, I won't be able to get that back spanner off. Yeah, that's a bit tight now, that's tightened itself up and it's binding. So what I'll do is I'll just um, back those nuts off a bit. So if I just uh, undo that, wind that out just a half a turn or so or a turn and bring the back nut back towards it. And then line the two up again otherwise I won't get this back spanner off. That's it. So that's just uh, the right amount of tension and our drill press is back to working order again.